my name's Katie and this is Fox. Can you say hi, Fox? Say hi to the camera. Hi. Do you want to talk about your favorite books today? Okay. Okay. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Tubby Time. Do you want to talk about Tubby Time? No. No? You like Tubby Time, don't you? No. Do you want to talk about the little airplane? No. Hey. Let's talk about Mouse Mess. Yeah. No. Bye again. Bye bye. All right. Go watch Peppa Pig. Like I said, my name is Katie. You just met my son Fox, who I sent over to the computer to watch Peppa Pig while I film because today I am winning at being mom. I'm gonna do my March reading wrap up today. So, um, I read eight books in the month of March, which is a lot of books for me. What are you trying to do, monkey? Oh lordy, this is going to be more difficult than I thought. <sighs> what to do with a child when you're trying to film? So I just gave you some more Cheerios. We're going to try this again. The first book that I read this month was Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I got this book from the library, and so I don't have a physical copy of it anymore, but I will attempt to put an image of it right here. So we'll see if I can do that. Otherwise, you're just going to see some floating hands. This is a uniquely and creatively told YA science fiction book that I kind of like to explain as space getaway meets pandemic meets crazy AI. It's on a lot of people's favorites list from 2015, and I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't my favorite book. I, I didn't feel super connected to the characters. I liked them. Um, but I really like to be more drawn in by characters, and I, and I didn't. The plot, however, was very fast-paced and exciting and gripping. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, mostly for its unput down ability. And I think I just made that word up, but I think it works. The next book I read was Americana by Chimimanda Ngozi Adichie. This is a literary fiction novel. The book is about a young Nigerian woman who comes to America to study, lives here for 10 years, and then decides to move back to Nigeria, which is where the name Americana comes from, because in Nigeria, that's what they call people who move back to Nigeria from the United States. It's heavily character-driven, which I love, and explores themes of race, home, belonging, and even relationships. I didn't always love Femalu, our main character. I found her unlikable at times, but I loved her for her realness. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie has a brilliant uh, writing style and an ability to really make characters feel like they are real people. And I love that because real people are complex and her characters are complex. Mommy! Hi, sweetie! Uh, we have a monkey again! Given the current climate in the United States right now, I found this book very timely and important, and I'm really glad that I read it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I read, I read on my Kindle, so once again, I will put an image of it right here if I can figure out how to do it. Um, it was called Kindred by Octavia Butler. A really interesting thing about this book is that it was the first science fiction book written by an African American author. And for that reason alone, I think it's really important that everyone read it. But beyond that, I just think that it's a really good book. It's about an African American woman living in the 1970s named Dana, who finds herself being pulled back to the antebellum south. The book never explains the how of why this happens, so it's very light on the science fiction. But over time, Dana does realize the why of why she's being pulled back. The book is complex, brutal, and heart-wrenching, and also really important, and not just because of who is writing it, but also because of the story that it tells. One of the things that makes this slave narrative really stand out from others is that um, it's being told from the perspective of a modern black woman, or relatively so, because the 1970s were 40 years ago now. So it gives us modern readers a unique perspective on the brutality and savagery of slavery, and it hits us that much harder. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars, and I highly recommend it. The next book I read, also on my Kindle, was called Dead Mountain, The Untold True Story of the Diet Love Pass Incident. This book follows the story of 
a group of Russian hikers in the 1950s. They were college students and they were going on a hiking expedition in the mountains in Russia. A few weeks into their trip, they all ended up dying under really mysterious circumstances that have gone unexplained for about 50 years. There was an investigation surrounding the, the events of their death and what may have led up to it, but no one knows. And that has led to some really crazy theories, everything from government cover-up to alien intervention. As I was reading this, I kept thinking, man, if Dana Scully and Fox Mulder were real people, they would have been all over this. The writer of this book explores some of those theories. He also explores the people involved and um, the situation in general, the incident, and then he posits a theory of his own. So if you enjoy the X-Files and stuff like that, I highly recommend picking this book up. It was really fascinating. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This was another really popular book on booktube this past year. I really wanted to read it at the time, but I felt like I needed to read the Grisha trilogy first, and so I did, and frankly, I was quite underwhelmed. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I went into this book with uh, lower expectations, even though people were saying that it was great. And my expectations were surpassed. It was a really good book, and one of the things that I think Lee Bardugo did so well in this book is drawing out a number of characters and really fleshing out their backstories, given the fact that, you know, it's only, you know, three or four hundred pages, and there were like six characters to follow, but you feel like you know them all, and you like them all, and you feel sympathetic to them all, even though they're very morally gray. I gave it a four out of five stars. What? Oh, are you giving me some love? The next book I read was called Dear Mr. Knightley by Mommy. Catherine Ray. So after reading mostly heavy fare this month, Mommy. I decided I really wanted something pretty light, and this book really fit the bill for that. The book is told in epistolary form, so it's told in letters. Our character, Sam, um, she loves classic romantic literature, so she falls back on um, stories like Jane Eyre and Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility, and actually she sort of hides herself behind some of these characters in those books. The book is really about her finding herself, finding family because she was an orphan growing up, and also finding love. I just read this at the Mommy. exact right time, so Mommy. I really enjoyed it. I gave it Mommy. a four out of five stars, although it might not be quite four stars. The next book I read is called Orbiting Jupiter by Gary Schmidt. Gary Schmidt is one of my very, very, very favorite middle grade authors, although I think this is considered YA. And one of the things that I love about his books, or at least the three that I've read, it's, it all takes place in the same universe. So his characters from the two other books that I've read, The Wednesday Wars and OK For Now, uh, one of them shows up in this book as well. He always deals with hard themes, but in ways that never feel like you're being burdened. Um, you always leave the book feeling hopeful, even in the midst of like great sadness. And this book is really sad, and it's probably his saddest book that I've read, although all of them end up making me cry. Um, but I end up feeling so hopeful, and um, like the books make me feel warm inside, because his characters, you just love his characters so much. Um, so I really enjoyed this book. Uh, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And the last book I read, I'm actually still finishing, but um, I think I'll finish it today, and so it, I will have read it in March, and that is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This is my first Colleen Hoover book, and frankly, Mommy. I was a little surprised at just Mommy. exactly how explicit this book is. I don't know, I just wasn't expecting it. So um, the main character, the girl, Tate, I don't find her a very fleshed out character. She's just pretty average and I think I think it's done on purpose. This is basically a romance novel and so I think she's writing it so that any woman can relate to this character Tate. And it's it's not like the most beautiful writing or anything. It's not terrible, but I'm really enjoying the book. We'll see how it ends up. Um so yeah. Um that 
is my March reading wrap up and I will try and pull Fox here in again because I really did sort of want to talk about some of our favorite books that we're reading. Hey Fox, you want to come back over here for a minute? Okay, okay, come here. Well, I just am going to mention Mouse Mess. This is one of our favorite books yeah. right now. It's by Linnea Riley and um, it sort of has these um, paper cutout pictures in it and it's a really simple story and we love peanut butter. This, this page talks about peanut butter and jam, doesn't it? Yeah, do you like peanut butter and jam? Peanut butter and jam? Is that what you want for lunch? Peanut butter and jam sandwich? Yeah. Yeah? Peanut butter and jelly? Okay. I guess we're going to have peanut butter and jelly for lunch. So with that, we will talk to you next time. Can you say bye? Bye. Bye. I'm talking to the camera. Okay. Yeah, here's your mom. Okay. There she is! There she is! There you are! Oh! Oh!